super service today wet and rainy Sunday pretty early in the morning just got just getting light headed up in the country to work on some logging equipment uh, I saw yesterday when I checked the weather that it was gonna rain today I understand a lot of guys would be like oh I ain't going out there and do that today uh, I don't operate like that um, I take the good with the bad and, and do the best I can I've, I've had occasions where it rained so hard that I really struggled to get done the work I, that I was trying to get done but I don't think it's ever rained so hard that I didn't get it done and overall the way I've come to be where when, with regards to weather uh, I just try you know take the good with the bad deal with the best you can deal with the issues and move on um, to say that oh it's a hundred percent chance of rain tomorrow I'm not even going to plan on doing that job I almost never and I would say probably safely could say never do that um, and there's times you can put stuff off for a better day but you know when I say take the good with the bad it's the 10th of December and, and we've got an outside temperature this morning early in the morning the outside temperature is 52 degrees you know it could just as easily not be raining right now but be seven or five degrees outside so I'm thinking how great it is that it's 52 degrees yeah it's raining uh, the rain's not pouring it right now, it's just a sprinkle. That's another benefit. Anyways, um, there's a few things that I did this morning in preparation for this. Um, I've got a tote full of tarps at the shop that I rarely carry. Uh, I threw it in the truck this time. Another thing I did, uh, I've loaded up my LN25 and the one the the LN25 wire feeder that I loaded up is the one that has flux core wire in it. It's got a spool of uh, Hobar wire Fab Shield 21B. That's a gasless flux core wire. And the reason I uh, brought the tarps is obviously the weather. I could build a tent over myself if need be. The reason I got the flux core uh, and brought the LN25 wire feeder, my buddy that owns this logging equipment that we're going to work on, uh, he sent his, one of his hands out yesterday. The guy great guy uh, came pick me up to pick up we went up and looked this piece of equipment there's an area uh, broken on an outrigger that's pretty critical needs repaired before this thing's used anymore and if it doesn't get repaired very soon and they continue having to use it it's going to break the other side and be a lot more work to fix so this needs done today be nice if it could get done today and these guys could work this machine Monday with no uh, with no downtime and and no further damage but since this feller was good enough to come pick me up take me up uh, where this piece of equipment is and we got to look at it I got the chance to see it and realize that there's an area on the inside of that outrigger framing that is very difficult to reach in there and weld. And if you stick welded it, it would be nearly impossible to take a straight welding rod and get the right approach angle to make the weld that need to be made. When we stick weld, you know, there's a certain rod angle that, you know, uh, your, your rod's not gonna run right unless you're approaching it at the correct angle. A lot of times when we weld vertical, we'll either be at 90 degrees or maybe pointed slightly upward. Uh, now, if all you got stick and you're in a place where you don't have a lot of space, you can bend a rod. 
You can bend the rod to get the angle right and reach in there and weld it. The problem is when you bend the rod, you can't burn the whole rod. That's going to slow you down. Um, one of the things about flux core that is very much different, uh, and it's a benefit in this situation, you drag flux core wire. Your approach angle, if you're moving left to right, uh, your, your angle of your flux core would be pointed towards the left, moving to the right. Well, this is going to be a vertical weld, and when you weld vertical with flux core wire, instead of pointing it up or pointing at 90 degrees from the material, with flux core on a vertical, you would point the uh, you would point the gun down. That's a huge benefit in this scenario because reaching in from the top is the easiest way that I can access it. So. If I'm going to reach in from the top with a welding process where I'm using the correct angle if I'm pointing down, that makes flux core ideal for this situation. Now, I had a viewer comment and I've had in other occasions viewer comments when whenever I was stick welding something and people would say, Hey, couldn't you use flux core on that? Well, there's a lot of stuff you can use flux core on that I stick weld. Since I have all welding processes available to me, I use the best process for the job. Uh, but one of the things I've noticed with some people is they automatically think because flux core wire is wire that it's faster than stick. That's not the case. Uh, that's not the case at all. Um, when you get into flux core wire, there's a few things about it. You've got what you're welding with, that wire you're welding with is kind of like a piece of, uh, it's like a tube. It's a tube that has metal on the outside and flux on the inside. Uh, you'll hear people say maybe that it's a welding rod turned inside out. Well, the other thing about flux core wire, it's got to be flexible enough that it rolls up on a spool. It can't be stiff as a welding rod or you'd never be able to reel it up on a spool. That means that that steel wire with the flux on the inside even when it's some of the big diameter flux core up into, you know, 068, 564, uh, 330 seconds. You can get flux core in 330 seconds and probably even bigger. But uh, there ain't a whole lot of metal there. There ain't a whole lot of steel per inch when you compare that to a, a 3 16 or a quarter inch welding rod. A 3 16 or a quarter inch welding rod has a bunch of iron in it. <clears throat> and if you look at high deposit rods like you, you might see me use a lot, like the jet rod, the 7024, or the, uh, the 7014, those are rods that have iron powder in the flux. 7014 or a, or a 7024 has iron powder in the flux that becomes weld metal when you weld with it. So that iron powder is that that's what makes it a high deposit rod because you're getting weld metal not only from the rod in the center of the flux but from the flux itself. Point being there's times when stick is ideal. There's times when flux core is ideal. There's times when dual shield is ideal. And the same with solid wire MIG. TIG, all the different processes, oxyacetylene, uh, oxyacetylene brazing, TIG brazing, um, with all the different welding processes, 
there's situations where one is better than the other. And if you have all these options available to you, and you can operate them correctly, that's a benefit to you and your customer. So, uh, rainy morning, headed out to work on some logging equipment. Hard hat's one of the best things to have in the rain. Never get a more waterproof hat. These streams like this in this area of the country, uh, they got native trout in them. That feller that brought me over here yesterday actually fishes this stream every February. He said he pulls a native out of every hole here. Probably the most delicious fish on the planet, but I really discourage people from taking them out of the water and eating them because there are just so few places in the country where they still exist. They're beautiful, beautiful little fish. This is what we're looking at. I got a trailer mounted loader uh, log handler. set up like this got a table here with a buck saw these saws man they can really do some cutting let's look at the size of the chips one of them bad boys can make it hadn't rained very hard yet, so I didn't waste any time getting a getting a tarp put up. All right, here's your problem. Got an outrigger. I'm assuming there's a bit of a dragging effect. This machine rotates. The log picker at the end grabs the log and he's lifting it, but also a lot of times dragging it in and out of this buck saw. And you can just imagine some of them really big logs. If you're dragging that if you're dragging that heavy log and hit something, look how much leverage you got against this outrigger. I mean, it's sticking out so far. It's like a cheater pipe against you know what that against what that bracket's holding. And uh, clearly this has been welded more than once before. Somebody's welded it right here and it broke. Uh, this right here was recently done and this looks like it was after that. This needs gouged out and welded up. And uh, obviously there's a plate on the outside, a plate on the inside. And it doesn't look like all of the cracks in each plate are lined up perfectly but the part I was telling you about about the flux core is on the inside you can see how welding in here you just ain't got a lot of room to work I'll get this gouged out and weld it up for him let's go
on the first part of this I had my long straight head torch with a scarfing tip and that's what I was reaching down in there with when I got to the bottom I couldn't get that torch in position I switched to a 90 degree 90 degree torch with a scarfing tip uh, you know you'll hear people say go get my torch well that's tricky to do on my truck because there's about a dozen different torches in there and every one of them has a use So I've got that gouged out where I seen the old weld. I think I got most of the old weld out of there. We're not going to be able to do much grinding in here. And you can see that the, uh, the outer plate, this outer plate makes a little bit of a backing strip for this weld where the two cracks, you know, the crack in each plate aren't perfectly lined up with one another. So, what we're seeing in the back of that crack right there is actually the other plate. Now, at the bottom, where I had to use the other torch, the cracks are lined up with each other. I'm not going to have any backing strip down there where the cracks are lined up with each other. And what I'm probably going to do is go to the outside and put some superficial weld there as a backing strip so that there'll be something there to hold the weld I'm putting on the inside. Then I'll go to the outside and gouge everything out until I hit the weld that I've made on the inside. Then I can grind everything out and weld the outside really well. Let's do it. I got out the LN25 uh, wire feeder. It's set up with flux core wire, the Hobart wire, Fab Shield 21B. I also like Lincoln wire. Lincoln makes a, a, a flux core called an NR211 that runs pretty good. I don't like the NR212. The NR211 runs pretty good, but I think the NR211 is a little bit brittle. Compared to this Fab Shield 21B, I think the Fab Shield 21B Hobart wire offers a better elasticity and resisting uh, cracking. And uh, this is just a wire feeder for those of you that don't know. I had this out on a on a rig site one time when I was welding for the drilling industry, and one of the hands walked up there and he said, "Hey man, if you can weld with that." Why do you even bother having that big old thing on your truck? But he didn't understand. This is just a wire feeder. This is not a welder. The power is coming from my welding machine. And the only thing that's kind of maybe sacrilegious about what I'm doing right now is I'm running a Lincoln wire feeder off of a Miller engine drive. But uh, they get along. I mean, we all got to get along to get the job done. So let's do it. That's as far as I got with the flux core. It was welding really good. It was reaching in there beautifully. As far as all that, it was doing what I wanted it to do, but I had some feeding issues. Uh, I may need a set of drive rolls in that machine. It may need a new gun or a new liner put on it. I changed the contact tip and that didn't help. But overall, uh, what happened was I had feeding issues and I keep I kept working on it through the process of working on it I had messed up a fair amount of wire 
and now I'm out of wire and I don't have another spool. Uh, so the flux core would be ideal here, but it's not an option now. Uh, we're gonna stick weld it. It's not gonna be a problem. Uh, it'd be a little easier to reach in there with the flux core, but we'll get her with a stick. <laughs> Update on the current situation. Uh, I've got this welded up there on the inside. It was unfortunate that I didn't get to weld it all up with the flux core, but ain't no big deal. Uh, switch back the stick and, and, and welded it up. Let's take a look. Clearly uh, a challenge reaching in there. Um, the rain hasn't been an issue. The tarp's working good. But the temperature's dropping fast. The way the temperature's dropping, I'd, I'd say we, we're liable to get some snow here in a little bit. Um, but what's going on now, where I've got this welded up on the inside... Now I'm going to go to the outside with the torch and gouge into it back until I hit the back side of this, this solid weld, you know, that I've got on the inside. And then when I weld it out from there out, you know, we'll have some pretty solid steel in there. We'll take a look at the other side here. One thing we're kind of going to have to deal with is this pin. Now, there's a great big nut that holds this pin on the other side. And when I got here, I was able to loosen that nut. And I beat on that pin with a, the, my biggest hammer, my big sledge. And it didn't move. It didn't budge a bit. I don't know what it would take to get that pin out of there, but I don't think I should fool with it. The only pivot action that, that happens on that pin is just this outrigger going up and down. If that pin's not in there perfectly straight or whatever, you know, maybe there's a bushing issue or something, it's just going to be that way and it's probably going to be fine. It doesn't have a whole lot to do with this repair. Now, obviously, if we were completely rebuilding this, we'd take that pin out, we'd take this broken plate completely off and burn out a new plate that's that shape and put on there and all that. There wouldn't be anything wrong with doing all that rebuild work, but that's not what I'm trying to do here right now. Uh, they're going to want to get logs out with this machine this week and I want them to be able to do that and I think we can get them ready to do that but the key thing is 
with this ear busted the way it was when I got here this morning, if those guys continue to run this machine, they're going to break it off on the other side, and then you're going to have a major problem. We don't want that. I think we're going to get this working where it's going to work for them just fine. It may need addressed in a more substantial way down the road, but it's going to be fine. It's going to be well worth the amount of work we're putting in it today. To get it to a point where it's it's useful without causing more damage. So, uh, I'll gouge out what I can on this outer side. And when I weld it up, I'm probably going to weld this pin right in there. I'm probably just going to weld right around that plate that's welded to that pin. And uh, I think that's the right thing to do. So let's get to work. I've got this to a point where I ran the 8th inch 7018 on everything that I wanted to get fused up and uh, and use the 1 8 rod. What I need now is a lot more fill. I'm going to switch to a 532 7014 high deposit rod uh, because I'm, I'm ready to put a lot more metal on here and that that electrode's gonna do it a whole lot faster and more efficient. I got some metal in the truck. I'm going to probably make a piece and go around the outer perimeter of this. Something to help resist the uh, cracking that's taking place. 
from those edges, I'm sure the edges is where it starts. Because when this machine rotates with a heavy log and they're dragging with it, you know, the log may not be picked up all the way, they're dragging it. And the leverage of the length of this outrigger, there's something happening that's causing that to, to crack and I'm sure that it's the outer edge where it starts. I'm sure that cracking started either right here or down there. Seems like that's most likely to me. I don't think adding a piece of metal around the outside is going to hurt it, so I'm going to see about doing that.
I'm sure there's uh, other issues need to be dealt with on this machine, but this was the main thing I wanted to tackle today and get them to where they can where they can run this machine and put it to work without doing any further damage, and I feel like they can do that. If this would be, if they would let this go, it would obviously rip this ear over here in two, you know, pretty quick. If all the load is being dealt with right here the way it was, uh, it, it would tear stuff up in a hurry. I know there's other cracks in this machine. So I know there's some other stuff that's going to be need to be dealt with. And also, there's a mount on the front that uh, the claw goes in when you transport it that's busted up pretty bad. Uh, but like I say, that's another thing that it ain't gonna stop them from getting logs out, and uh, I want them to be able to put this thing to work. So I'm gonna get to work cleaning up this stuff. Uh, I got a lot to put away, and uh, I'd rather not get caught out here in the dark. So put the ear back on. That's what I wanted to get done today, and that's what I got done. Thanks for watching. CB here, the No BS Welder, coming at you with his t-shirt on because I wanted to show you the new uh, t-shirt, NBS Welding here on the chest, got the American flag on the sleeve, NBS Welding on the back. Get a hold of Tina, send us an email at nbswelding at aol.com, get a hold of Tina if you want one of these shirts, 25 bucks plus shipping and handling, she'll get you a shirt. So I'm plugging the shirts, and while I'm plugging the shirts and doing commercials, I just as well throw in my Thrive. Now, my Thrive system, if you didn't see my Thrive video, I can put a link in there and you can check that out later. Uh, the Thrive system is the supplement system that I've been taking. I'm on my seventh year. Uh, seven years I've been taking Thrive. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a supplement system. I start out first thing in the morning with these capsules right here. These capsules right here. This will get you turbo spinning. First thing, you get out of bed. As soon as my feet hit the floor, I take these two capsules right here and I drink me a glass of water. First thing. Then, within half hour to an hour later, I make a shake. This is a, a micronized powder. I'll put it in uh, about 10, 12 ounces or more of, of ice water. Shake it up real good. Drink that down. Whenever I take the shake, I put on the patch. Now, there's different patches. When you go to the site, you can see whichever one you want. Uh, this is an elite patch. Uh, this is the elite formula shake. There's also the standard formula. If you want to know the difference, I think the Elite is geared a little more towards weight loss. And I think the energy from the capsules is a little more spread out. Uh, on the Elite, it's more of a slow release. So, uh, the Elite is the new one, and then there's a the standard formula. Uh, I've, I'm taking the Elite right now, but I have, I've taken the standard formula for years. I took the standard formula for over six years. But if, if you want a supplement, if you're the kind of person like me uh, that wants a supplement system, you know, I said before, there's some people that don't take supplements, they don't watch their diet, you know, it doesn't matter if they exercise or not, and they feel good, sleep good, they look fit, and they don't have to, they just, they just they're just like that. And there's one thing I know for sure about those people is that I'm not one of them. Unfortunately, 
I got to take my supplements. I got to pay attention to what I eat. Um, and I got to stay active or I'll gain weight. I'll gain weight and I don't feel good. And, and, and that's no good. Uh, and nobody wants to get fat and lazy, you know. And as I'm getting older, you know, I've got to do a little more all the time uh, to keep myself. Man, I want to be right there. You know, I want to be on it. Every day I want to get up and get going and do it. Uh, and, and I, and I gotta stay, I gotta stay at it, man. So, uh, it, it, the link it, it will be, uh, there'll be a link in the description of the video and you can find out where to sign up for the Thrive. If you sign up for the auto ship, you get a discount and don't freak out because it's auto ship. You can cancel it whenever you want. Uh, but signing up for the auto ship will save you some money but this thrive supplement system that's going to be your vitamins minerals your probiotics your prebiotics coq10 glucosamine uh caffeine but it's not caffeine like caffeine that's in coffee it's not like caffeine this caffeine they uh they extract it uh you know from different ways uh, and different sources. It's not just like the, the coffee caffeine. Uh, there's no crash with this. And if you follow this system, you get up, you take your capsules, you drink your shake, you put on your patch, uh, avoid all other caffeine. You don't want to be drinking coffee or Red Bull. You don't want none of that. You don't mix this stuff. You, you take your Thrive, and, and, and you'll get the energy, and you'll stay active, and you'll have reduced inflammation. Uh, you're getting all your vitamins and minerals, and you're going to fill in those gaps, those nutritional gaps that need filled in. You'll feel better, you'll look better, and be better. So, if you want a t-shirt, $25 plus shipping and handling, send us a request. At, at uh, Send us an email nbswelding at aol.com i'll we'll do we're taking some pictures of the shirts where we can uh throw up pictures every once in a while with that email address in between the videos and uh buy a shirt sign up for some thrive get it on auto ship get to taking that and let's roll